Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of The Master, the new Paul Thomas Anderson film. Saw it last night. Before I get into the review, I guess I'll just talk about um, what I think of Paul Thomas Anderson, which uh, I very much, you know, I like his work. I love Boogie Nights and Magnolia. Uh, Magnolia is my favorite of his. Punch Drunk Love, There Will Be Blood, I enjoy both of those very much. And uh, going into this film, I heard that it had great performances, but it was a little, like, hollow and maybe a little, like, kind of, like, soulless, basically. Which I didn't really mind, you know, if you know that going into something, it's fine. If that sneaks up on you, that can, you know, maybe hurt your opinion of it the first time you see it. Um, but I kind of felt that way about There Will Be Blood. I kind of felt that it was a little like a, a kind of like a hollow kind of film because the main character was so unlikable. But I still enjoyed the film very much. Uh, and however, I would say that the it was an accurate description of this film, that it had great performances, but it is a little hollow and a little um, kind of soulless, pretty much. But, you know, and again, that doesn't, when a film is like that, it doesn't mean that it's automatically, like, bad if you don't have a, a huge emotional connection to what's going on. I prefer films that I can have a bigger emotional connection to. But, you know, if you know going into something that you're not going to find that, then I think you can work your way around it and still enjoy a movie very, very much. Just like... Um, you know, I mean, basically, it's kind of like, it, it doesn't mean that a film is bad if it's not, you know, very emotional involving. It just means that you have to basically, you know, see if you enjoy it or not. Just like if a film is overly sentimental, that doesn't make it bad, it makes it sentimental. It doesn't mean that it'll be good or bad. It's just, you know, it basically depends on you when you watch it. I mean, if a director knows that his characters are unlikable, and he knows that he's going to take the audience on a journey with unlikable people then you, that whole, like, point to make that say, like, oh, it was, you know, the characters were just awful people, I don't, you know, so I didn't enjoy it. It's kind of like, yeah, but that's what you were getting yourself into. I mean, if, you know, hopefully someone would tell you that beforehand, which is what I'm trying to do here, I guess. The thing about Paul Thomas Anderson is that he knows what kind of film he's making. You know, he has every confidence in the world in it. He knows that he's going to take his audience on a journey with unlikable people with this film. So, saying you didn't enjoy the film just because it had unlikable people in it, um, which, again, made the film maybe emotionally distant, that point is kind of difficult to kind of sit there and just say, well, I didn't like it at all because of this. It's like, yeah, but that was kind of intended. Maybe you didn't enjoy it, but it's not the best reason to really criticize uh, a movie, basically, or at least this one. Yes, no, I understood that going into the film, and that's kind of how the film was, but I had other problems with it, and uh, I guess I'll just get into that basically right now. The plot of it is pretty much uh, Joaquin Phoenix plays um, a man, it takes place in 1950, he just came out of, I guess, like, not just out of, but after, like, World War II, and he's just, um, you know, he's just really messed up. He just, he drinks alcohol mixed with stuff like paint thinner and stuff like that and he's just like he'll be violent and unpredictable and he ends up at some point meeting Philip Seymour Hoffman's character who is loosely kind of based on L. Ron Hubbard and um you get the idea that when they meet that like oh these two can you know help and challenge each other that's not really what happens. And in fact, the film doesn't really have much of a plot once they do meet because it's just about the two of them engaging each other for the rest of the movie. Now, There Will Be Blood was a film that was, you know, really not without... didn't really have much of a plot. It was more like a character piece. This film, like I said, it's just these two people kind of engaging each other over a period of time. Now, the engagement of the two uh, actors uh, delivered on, like, just very, very, like, stirring, stirring stuff. Phoenix and Hoffman were um, fantastic. In fact... I guess I'll just get into um, what was the best thing about the movie, and that was the, the acting. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is an actor that, you know, if he took a couple of years off, you know, it's fine. They're allowed to do that if they want to. But I'm really annoyed that he took a couple of years off to do, like, that, you know, stupid I'm not there thing. Because he really, I think, is one of the best actors we have. Because he... I wasn't surprised at how amazing he was in this film. He was just... It was the best performance I've seen in a movie this year. Everyone's saying it's going to be him and Daniel Day-Lewis at the Oscars next year. Um, John Hawks might sneak in for his film, The Sessions, but um, that remains to be seen. But yeah, Phoenix is a character in the film, and while I said he wasn't likable, and he's not, 
it didn't mean I wasn't sympathetic with him because he needs help. And when someone needs help, you want to help him. But at the same time, he's a guy that seems he's so unpredictable that you kind of just want to back away. And you really wouldn't want anything to do with him. But he was great. Hoffman comes in the film around the half hour mark and he just comes in and just commands presence basically like you're not sure if he's gonna be able to go toe and toe toe to toe with phoenix and he does and the funny thing about him is that he um he's just as like off the wall as phoenix characters is character is he's just more hypocritical um but basically if you challenge him in any way like you know phoenix char character is challenged in the film he just has these bursts of anger that are some of the best moments in the movie some of the funniest moments in the movie too where he just starts randomly cursing and um, yelling at people. But he was absolutely fantastic. He's someone that's always just so reliable. And uh, that's kind of what he is. He's reliable, and then he's in a movie like this, and you just see that, yeah, he's amazing. And uh, he was. Amy Adams played Hoffman's wife in the film, and she was fine. I mean, I, I guess I was actually a little disappointed. I mean, she kind of played against type, but I kind of just saw Amy Adams playing against type, really. Um, I actually preferred her in The Fighter. Uh, from a couple of years ago and a couple other films that she's normally in. She usually doesn't disappoint me. And she wasn't bad or anything, but like someone else could have played the role, basically, and that's probably not the best compliment, considering that how good Hoffman and Phoenix were. And I saw the film in 70mm, and it looked absolutely gorgeous. Uh, kind of set in the third row, which was a little unfortunate, but um, it looked great. And, you know, Anderson... Now, I'm going to go through some of the problems I have in the movie, but Anderson, he knows what he's doing. He... Visually, you know, he's pretty much a master of his craft, no pun intended. Um, sorry. He, you know, he knows exactly what he's doing with the score. Um, and he loves his, his, uh, he's just in so much, there's so much more confidence in, like, his work than even before. Like, his work, in, you know, earlier on, like, Boogie Nights and Magnolia was, was, I thought was great, but he's just, he's just, like, kind of coming into his prime now, you can tell, just, like, talent-wise. He may not make always the best film he can make. But it's, like, the talent isn't going anywhere anytime soon. He's going to be making great films uh, for years to come. He did have his, uh, his traditional long tracking shots in the movie. Not like the Boogie Nights Magnolia ones where they follow a bunch of people, but just, like, moments where the take keeps going. And it kind of took me out of the movie a little bit. They always sort of do, especially in his, because I'm sitting there more or less admiring the shot than really paying attention, and I'm kind of sitting there thinking, like, oh, God, I would hate it if I was the one that screwed up my lines or something like that. But, um, yeah, still, he's one of the best um, we have, all, you know, nowadays, and I will always look forward to the stuff that he does, even if I didn't, you know, really enjoy this film that much. All right, now, basically, the problems I have in the film kind of stem from, first, the best part in the film, for the best scene in the film, is early on a moment... Um, where I won't, again, go into, like, spoilers. I'll do some spoiler stuff, really, um, at the end here. I'll let you know. Uh, it's a moment where Hoffman and Phoenix really first engage each other, and it's kind of like a session, um, almost like a therapy kind of session, or it seems to be. And it's this moment where he just keeps asking Phoenix questions, and, Phoenix, you know, he's just answering fast, fast, and it's just as stirring. It's like I'm watching this moment in the movie, and I'm like, oh, here's the first, you know, great moment and hopefully a great movie. And, um, unfortunately I didn't feel that way about the rest of the film, but it really was great. The problem is, that scene kind of makes it look like things are going to go somewhere. Like, these two people are going to help each other somehow. But around the 70% point of this film, I sat there and I realized that this was going to go absolutely nowhere. That... Everything that I've been watching was just going to end up being pretty much useless. And, you know, it, you, when you notice that, like, 70% through a film, it's kind of a sobering truth to face. And it kind of took me out of the movie and made me, you know, really, like, kind of sitting there just going, like, you know, like, oh, man. I mean, it's not like the film doesn't have anything to say. It has a lot of stuff to say. You know, if you watch a film like this, you can look at it on the surface um, I mean, you have to look, you know, deeper than the surface and really try to get into it, and you will be able to find stuff. The whole, I mean, the whole point of, like, the, the whole religious angle of the film and the, the idea that everything is just, you know, there's just utterly no point to it, it's just kind of the idea that, you know, religion, when it's in certain hands, can just be looked at as some sort of, 
of cult and just some very, you know, just kind of like vicious kind of weapon. And, you know, religion in the right hands really could help someone, but as too often these days, it's in the wrong hands. And, like, I get that that seemed to be the point of everything. At least may maybe there's a whole bunch of other stuff that someone else can enlighten me on. But, like, yeah, so that stuff is there. But as, you know, again, I was just kind of sitting there like, all right, if this isn't going to have a point to the film, at least, or, you know, uh a point to the whole story at least you know show me something profound and uh it didn't really do it enough for me to really kind of sit there and just go oh i enjoyed it now that's not look it's not to say that if you love paul thomas anderson if you love his films you need to go see this because you're gonna you may love it 10 times more than i did uh well, i didn't love it at all um or you may feel about it the same way I did, but you may like it a little bit more than I did to kind of push it over the edge to really say, like, yes, you know, good movie, I enjoyed it, I'd go see it again. Uh, by the way, you do need to go see this with, you know, maybe a couple of people so you can discuss it afterward because there's going to be things that you won't get um, that maybe they did and vice versa. And it would just be a pretty good discussion kind of film at the end. And, um, again, it doesn't make it good. It just makes it something that would be, you know, that you can discuss. And, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, when it was over... I just kind of sat there, and my first thought was just like, eh. And uh, that, 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 that's the, you know, the honest truth, and that was kind of just disappointing. That's what I thought. Um, all right, I'm going to switch it over to spoiler stuff now to try to back up at least some of my points here. And, um, yeah, so here. One of the problems with the movie is that so many things are just kind of rendered useless. And while that, I guess, is kind of the point, of, of everything. I mean, it still it bothered me, basically. Like, Amy Adams has this moment in the film where she, you know, basically, showingly, while well, she jerks off Hoffman's character, basically tells him, you know, that you can do whatever you want, I just don't want to hear about it. Which I guess backs up the whole idea, whole idea of every, of, you know, she knows everything's a lie. She's not saying the religious part is a lie, but she knows that, you know, lies are going on everywhere. She just doesn't really want to hear about it. She wants to be blind to it. And I get that's the idea in the movie, but it's just, I don't know, it just didn't go anywhere. The moment that was 70% into the film that I was talking about was when Hoffman is trying to put another exercise on Phoenix where he has him go touch a wall and a window and has him, you know, Amy Adams asks some questions and he has another, you know, kind of back and forth with someone else. And I realize, I'm sitting there going, like, this isn't going to help him. I was like, they're not even trying to help him. I said, this is all just bullshit. Just completely, like, he could have put the word bullshit on the screen for 20 minutes, and I would have gotten the exact same thing out of it. Um, and, again, I, you know, I was pointed out to me that him going back and forth, you know, touching the wall, touching the window, basically, you know, saying, yeah, it's a wall. You know, the idea that religion wants you to see more than a wall, I guess. Like, yeah, that's fine, but still. The fact that it was just all bullshit, and I knew it was all bullshit... You know, didn't help the moment at all. It kind of just hindered it, pretty much. And I get the whole idea with um, the end of the film. Phoenix went back to go see the girl because now he felt, I guess, he was ready to see her. Um, maybe, perhaps, I guess he did get some help from Hoffman's character, but I, I don't really think he did. But then, then it's just weird that Hoffman calls him to come see him over in like England, and he goes. And, yeah, okay, he's sitting there in this big, like, room with these big windows looking like a real, you know, Citizen Kane type, you know, kind of, like, leader or whatever. But, like, Phoenix sits there, Amy Adams insults him, walks out, and then Hoffman starts, like, singing to him. And, again, I, I miss this meaning, what it was. I just, if someone wants to tell me, you know, what was going on there, that's fine. But because I was just sitting there kind of just going, like, all right, we're going with, uh, we're going with this now? Okay. Um... And yeah, and then Phoenix just ends the film, you know, right where he started. Uh, so the whole film was just basically, you know, instead of it going, like, about being, you know, this, like, moment for this person's life and just going through it, it was almost like the Phoenix character is on this really dark path and he just takes a detour that puts him right back on the dark path. Like, it literally does nothing for him. And, you know, again... The whole idea of the film being, you know, emotionally distant wasn't my problem with it. It was just, 
I kind of felt like what I watched was just unnecessary. It was just kind of just like, yeah. So I watched, you know, bullshit for two hours, basically. Um, which didn't seem like bullshit, but on like a rewatch. I mean, maybe a rewatch, it'll be better. Maybe I'll find more about it. Certainly anyone out there that, you know, uh, loves the film, I, I hope someone, you know, can like put comments down and maybe, you know, just have a calm discussion about this. Uh, don't tell me I didn't like get the movie or anything like that. I know there's stuff under the surface that I didn't get. In fact, help me out. Um, and uh, I hope we can just have like calm discussions about this. But anyway, I would probably give the film a 6 out of 10. When it was over, I was like, hmm, maybe, you know, maybe a 7. I'll say the acting pushed it to a 7. And I realized, like, no, the acting pushed it to a 6. Um, and that doesn't mean, like, I may see the, you know, the Judge Dredd remake and give it, like, a 7 just because it's a different kind of movie and it's a different kind of feeling going into, going into it. A 6 out of 10 Paul Thomas Anderson movie is much better than, you know, most of the shit going on these days. So, um... So yeah, that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.